Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we took on the Buffalo Sabres in the conference finals and we unfortunately lost but I still think it was a good year because over the last three seasons we went to round one round two and round three so we've been progressively getting better each season and i hope that we can maybe go to the cup finals this coming season if not it's not the end of the world but this young team has been doing pretty good for the most part um but unfortunately we lost to buffalo but now we have an important draft to pick up some more new pieces for our puzzle and yeah hopefully we can make another good run next season but before we get into the draft we do have a few comments to go over the first one is from uh, half silly which i believe is wmra and he just changed Changed his name. I could be wrong with that though. He says Spiller and Ferguson defense should, could be stockpiled locked uh, later on. Acquire a pick between 40 and 45, and both could be acquired. So I'll show you guys the draft class quickly. Ferguson is one of the ones that I wanted. Um, I was showing you guys near the end of the last episode. Um, I also did pin Spiller, but I'll show you guys Spiller afterwards. But Ferguson, I was saying, oh, we should probably take him with like our first round pick. But from Half Silly's uh, comment, he says that we should probably try and get, uh, who is it, uh, get Spiller and probably trade for a pick that's in the middle of the second round and then we can get Ferguson because Ferguson is going to be really good. Like he's a low elite defenseman that already has like this attributes. It's really di ridiculous. He's probably like a 78 out of the draft. So we'll probably definitely take him with a trade. But he was saying to probably take Spiller with our first pick, which is at number 28, I think. So Spiller might go at 27th. So he might go a little bit early, but hopefully not. If he doesn't go, then we will get a top four defenseman probably in Spiller. And then we will get Ferguson if we could try and make a trade for the middle round pick. So that's the comment from Half Silly. Thank you for that. The next comment is from Hawksfan88. He says, I think you should re-sign all your young guys and just keep going. As long as this team keeps developing, they'll probably make a cup or win a cup at some point. Which I agree with if we look at our contract situation here. Uh, these guys are all the ones that are up for renewal. So all these RFAs definitely we're going to be bringing back. But there is one guy like Eklund, I think, is probably not going to come back. Because... Uh, even though he did play all 82 games with us, he only had 8 points and he was a minus 9. He's also dropped down to a 77. He was like a 79, I think, or 78. So he's probably going to be let go of just because of the fact we do need to get uh, Jalen Kemp into our lineup and stuff anyways. So, But yeah, our young team is looking pretty good for the most part, which I'm very excited about to see how we simulate again this next few seasons. And anyways, our final comment is from Kevin Jimena. He says, it's nice to see the Thrashers gain experience in the conference finals. Hopefully this will help the team long term, which I agree with as well, because I think this team is just getting better and better as each year goes on. And honestly, we I feel like we could bink the cup finals next year if we keep this team as close together as possible. Because uh, we do got a good roster already. The defensive core is only getting better. Like after this draft, if we get that low elite defenseman, we're going to be really good on the defensive front. Like, we have not even played uh, Gugnot yet in the uh, in uh, the NHL yet. And we already have a pretty good young defensive core for the most part. So, should be interesting to see how good this defensive core is with a lowly added to it. Like, he would probably fit in. Like, I feel like we would have to probably get rid of somebody on our defensive core to play him next season. So, there's an always a chance we could move out somebody like Brody or Pelugis, but not sure yet. So... Anyways, those are the comments to go over. Let's get into this draft and see what we can get. Hopefully, we could find some decent gems and hopefully we could make a trade for that 47th pick or a little bit earlier. I'll probably try and trade for like 43rd overall, maybe even 40th overall. So, St. Louis has got number one, Anaheim, Pittsburgh, Phoenix, and the Islanders. We're all the way up at number 28. Like I said, if Spiller goes earlier... And then there's always a chance that we uh, just take that low elite in the first round instead. So let's see what the top three or the top five are like. So St. Louis at number one is going to take Sweeney, who's a two-way forward, 79 overall. It's pretty good. He actually had a really good statistics in the United States. So should be interesting to see how that guy is for St. Louis. Anaheim at number two is going to take Payet. Or Payet? Yeah, Payet or Payet, something like that. He's a sniper. That's a nice addition for their roster. 
91 shooting across the board. Yeah, this guy's probably going to win like a Richard at some point. He also had really good stats. Pittsburgh's going to take Grossman, who's a center. That's pretty nice at number three. Phoenix takes a playmaker on Laddie. Yeah, this might be a pretty deep draft for the most part. Still 80 overalls going in. Offensive defenseman goes fifth overall. That's a pretty good pickup for the Islanders. Should definitely trend them in the right direction. So, let's them to our pick at number 28. And I don't think that defenseman went... Oh, and this draft might actually not be that good because we're getting top nines and top sixes now. So, if I do take Spiller here, he might end up only being like a top six, but he might be a top four too. And then we're going to have to try and trade for a middle round pick next round. Okay, Elvin Spiller, since uh, we got suggested to take you, we're going to take you, see how good you are. And you're a top 60 as well, so that's not a really great pick, I would say. Kind of sucks, I thought he was going to be a top 4, but oh well. So we're not going to sim yet, we're going to try and trade for a earlier pick next round. So this would be 32, 33, 34, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, wait, does anybody want to move around here? The Pittsburgh Penguins want to trade that pick. So, let's get a trade done with Pittsburgh. And we will give them our second, obviously. And maybe a second for next year. Or th Actually, we could give them their third round pick for this year already as well. Hmm, they don't want our third for this year, but they do want our third for next year. So, maybe we could do that. Second and a third for that pick. And that's accepted. Okay. So we might have given up a little bit too much, but I will take that second, and hopefully that defenseman doesn't go earlier, because I have seen that happen before. I'm not even going to look to see if he went already. Oh no, did he go? No, he didn't go. Good. Oh, thank God. Gordon Ferguson is going to be a beast. Very excited to get this guy, so welcome to the team, Gordon Ferguson. And yep, he's a 78 two-way defenseman low lead. Wow. I mean, his attributes-wise, he's good defensively for the most part right now. And then his offensive stats aren't great. But his uh, he's got good shooting power. His shooting accuracy is not terrible. His passing can improve a little bit. He's a good skater, too. So that looks a very interesting pick. And yet, this guy's going to be playing maybe in the NHL next season. We could always play him in the AHL for one year, even though he's listed as a top 60. I don't know, but that's a really good steal in the second round. So that is that. On to our third round pick. Uh, maybe a lowly power forward in Wingrowski. Or, yeah, Wingrowski. This guy is three years away, so he might be like a top nine with like a high overall, but I don't know. There's also Joseph Motsko. Hmm, three years away. I don't really know what I want to go after. It's probably one of the two of those guys because we already have a lot of defensemen. I feel like Wingrowski's probably a top nine, to be honest, even though he's three years away. I think I'm going to take Joseph Moscow. Might as well. And he is going to be a top nine as well. 64 sniper. Might pan out because we have had some top nines getting some good development. He does have some pretty good shooting attributes, so that might be a decent pick. It's a pretty good starting overall for a top 9, actually. Especially considering he's 18. Um, and in our next pick, Russ Blake. Eh, I might just auto sim the rest of his draft, to be honest, because it doesn't look like there's anything else that's really intriguing. Low top 9. and yeah, it's not terrible. Hmm, this guy's got A- minus shooting. It's kind of intriguing, but he's already 20. Yeah, I think I'm going to auto-sim the rest of this draft, because if there's AHL top 6 forwards going at this point in the draft, this draft is not worth uh, picking in, so let's just auto-draft the rest, and then we'll get into our re-sign stage. So the computer gets us teaming in Blacker, and Roth in Renes. Okay. Time to get into this re-sign stage, and we do need to bring back our associate coaches in both the NHL and the AHL. So I guess we'll do that. Our head coach retired. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's something I didn't mention in the uh, last episode because last episode had like a bit of a problem to it. But we did lose our head coach to retirement. So we're going to need a new head coach this year. So should be interesting to see what we could get for our 
head coach. So I'll take a look at that also when we get into the contract situation or to the free agency part. Because we're going to need a new coach. Okay, let's go to all expiring. So Jalen Mall is going to get a bigger contract. I'll give you a five-year deal. And I'll just give you exactly what you want because I don't really care about any cap hit in this. Because there's no minimum or no maximum cap. Uh, Hentries only wants a one-year deal, but I would prefer to get him maybe on like a four-year deal. So I'll try and get him to a four-year deal like five as well. Try and lock up everybody that we can. Kuznetsov, maybe shorter term, one year. Yeah, one year at 2.3. Probably a lot of these RFAs are just going to end up rejecting. Uh, Brody, I could give you three years at 4.5. Three five, that's fine with me. Martinez, I'm fine with giving you that. Frolov, one year, eighteen hundred. Jalen Kemp wants a one way deal. We'll just give him what he wants. Give Velo. Drop it a little bit. There you go. Bobrovsky. Yeah, we'll give you what you want as well. Damn, we have a lot of RFAs. Eklund's going to get let go of, so thank you for your one season here, Eklund, but we're going to let you go. And then we're going to just, yeah, we're going to qualify everybody that's part of the AHL, because they'll all accept eventually at some point, I think. And then we also need to make sure we have enough contract spaces to actually sign any free agents if we want to sign free agents. We're going to give Lapierre his ELC. Should be good to see him in the AHL next year. Whereas Galov will qualify. I should let go of some of these guys though. You know what? I'm going to let go of uh, Malone. Because Malone's not going to be anything. And I should also let go of Gibbons because he's already 25. And we'll qualify you. Yeah, some of these guys I'm definitely going to let go of because we need to make room for some new youngsters. Do I want to sign Barkov? He's 22. Not really. Hmm. We'll qualify you. And that is good, I think. Yeah, I think that's pretty much good. Actually, maybe I will sign you to your ELC at you. I'm not going to. And then goalie-wise, we're going to sign Brian Elliott to a two-year extension. Give him 4.5. Robbins, I will give you... Hmm. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to give you a one-year deal. Tack you down to 950, though. And then we will just qualify the HL goalies. And that should be good. Unsigned-wise, let me just check this. So we're going to sign Ferguson to his ELC. And we're also going to sign Cleary to his ELC. I might not have enough contract space to get all these guys in yet. But those are that. And we don't have any goalie prospects, so... Let's advance today, see if we got all those guys in. And so we are going to be getting back one of our coaches. We don't get the AHL associate back, but that's okay. Okay, so we should get most of these guys in, I would assume. So UFA-wise, we still have... Actually, both these guys we're going to get let go of. So we're going to let go of Barkov. You know he might pan out. And Gibbons is going to get let go of... RFA wise, the only one that's holding out still is Givello. I am going to get rid of Malone now. Yeah, we're going to have to give Skivello a little bit more, which is okay. Maybe I'll accept 1.5. Yeah, everybody accepted on the team pretty much. I guess that's because of how we played last year, maybe. So Skivello accepts it, and the rest of them are all qualified, which is good. Okay, we're in a good predicament. How much qualified people do we have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 people. So technically we'll have like 6 contracts in terms of space, I think. Actually, 4 contracts in space. Which is not really a whole lot for free agents. I could probably end up just signing most of these guys, because actually some of them want one-way deals, which is a little bit weird. Yeah, all these guys like want one-way deals. You really think you're going to get a one-way deal as a 74? I'm like, kiss my ass. 
seriously, like what the heck? I guess it's just because of how they uh, are labeled in this uh, type of franchise mode, but like 71's wanting a one-way deal is ridiculous. Hmm. Interesting. Well, all those guys are qualified. Yeah, they all want one-way deals. That is ridiculous. Okay, so anyways, that is our contracts done with. Now let's take a look at what our roster looks like so far for next season. I don't know if we really need to sign a lot. To be honest, if we wanted to actually sign anything. Because right now our roster for centers, we got Bergeron, Malkin, Houghton, Kuznetsov, Frolov, Skivello. Maybe even Klinge to an extent. But uh, right now it would be Malkin and Bergeron on the top line. Houghton and... Yeah, Houghton on the second line. Kuznetsov on the third. Frolov on the fourth. Or Skivello on the fourth. And then left wing wise, we got Kovalchuk, Henricius, Likachev, and Kemp. Who would be really good to be uh, bringing into our lineup because of his passing attributes. And in right wing wise, we'd have Bork, we'd have Bobrovsky, maybe even Hillen could jump up or Wolski. So we technically have like four. We have another. Actually, Ivanov could jump up too. We have like nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, we got more than enough forwards, I think. And then defensively, we'd be having like Wall and Kondratiev still, Bluegis, Brody, Conley, Martinez, and there's also like Edmonds, Ferguson, like, and Gugnot. Yeah, I honestly don't think we need to pick up anything in free agency, but I will let you guys suggest me anything. Because we have a really good roster for the most part, really good depth as well, because Robbins is a extra goalie. So that's that situation. Let's sim to free agency and take a look at what's available. As well, I'll show you guys what's available for coaches because we do need a head coach. Because Dolly Wall or whatever his name decided to retire. Which kind of sucks after getting us to the conference finals. So let's take a look at those free agents that are available. Because we don't really need anything, I would say. But we'll take a look at what's available. Anyways, a lot of RFAs holding out. Interesting. Let's take a look at UFAs though because they don't like picking up RFAs. Uh, so there's like Chris Drury, Brendan Morrison, Saku Koivu, so some pretty good veterans. Actually, let's go by centers first. Yeah, some pretty good veteran-based players. If we want to bring in any veterans to our young team, we could always do that. There's also younger guys like Sean Tishurgel, who's only 25. Nils Storp, who's only 25. We could bring back always like Dan Snyder if we wanted to. Spart for it. <laughs> Um, let me take a look at potential players, see if there's any low lead steals. Uh, nothing outrageously good for centers. Nothing really outrageous for wingers either. Ooh, there's an 85, 25 year old winger. I don't really think we need to pick up anything, but like there's Ernest Rankin, who was drafted by the Canadians, would fit our third line. But that would be way too good of a third liner to have, to be honest. <laughs> I honestly don't want to like ship the computers off signing people. There's like Paul Correa, for example, though, for veterans. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My voice is going on me for some reason already. Could be because I just woke up recently. Right wing wise, Peter Sikora, Zednik, Mike Johnson, Havlat. Yeah, there's some really good players out there. Yarmar Yager. Hmm, interesting. What about for potential players? Not really. Some low elites, but they're not going to be as good of low elites. Okay, let's start by overall again. Let's go to defensemen. So the best defenseman out there is Robin Regeer. And then there's also Thomas Caverley, Dennis Seidenberg. There's some good defensive options, but like I said, we don't really need defensemen. We don't really need forwards either. But if you guys see anything you want me to bring in, let me know. Or that we should bring in. And then goalie-wise, we don't really need a goalie depth, but there's like Turco, Lalim, Esh, Nabokov's heading for a agency after winning the Vezna, I'm pretty sure. There's also like Lehman, who's a 23-year-old goalie. He was drafted by the Edmonton Oilers in the first year draft. Jimmy Howard's also testing free agency. Interesting. Final thing, let's take a look at what's available for coaching staff, just because we do need a new coach. Hopefully we could find somebody that actually matches our system pretty well, or matches our teams pretty well, I should say. 
Okay, what do we got for head coaches that match our system? 57 is the best so far. 57 again in Desjardins. He doesn't utilize Bork that well. What about the other 57? This guy uses pretty much everybody decently. Bork still a little bit low. Any other high ones? 57 for Vince McBain. And that one's not that great. What else do we got here? 57 on Valkyler. Valkyler is okay. But some of these guys are like associate coaches. But there doesn't seem to be any stud coaches really. So the best we're probably going to be getting is like a 57% team fit. Hmm. Yeah, and then the rest of these guys are like 0% for our AHL team. Hmm. So if we're looking to get a coach... We could either get the most expensive one. Actually, we don't even have the... Yeah, we probably don't even have enough cap to get this guy or money to get this dude. But if we want to get a 57% coach, the cheapest 57% coach is this Desjardins guy. He wants only 784k. He's a defense-heavy coach, though. So this guy might be... Yeah, this guy might be our best option, to be honest. And then there's also, what else do we got for 57s? Vince McBain, but he's an associate coach, but he could still be interesting. He only wants 729k, but he's older. He's only 61 already. Hmm. Yeah, so I'll leave it at that. Um, let me take also a quick look at what's available on the trading block, just in case you guys want me to make any trades next episode, but I don't think it's necessary for our team to do so. Just because of the way we're set up. But Anaheim has like some defensemen. Gill, Lidman, Kuba. It's funny that Tony Lidman's actually in Anaheim. Because he was right at the end of his career. Boston's got Sergei Samsonov on the block. That's kind of intriguing. But don't really like his contract. Bertuzzi, Pekka, Dollywall. Whoever you are. Blunden and Vandermeer. Okay. Some more prospects in Calgary. Yeah at the moment there's not really anything. There's more just prospects and some veterans that have bad contracts. I'd say Zhitnik. It's not a bad defenseman. Dallas has literally nothing on the block. Detroit nothing. And I'm excited to see also where certain free agents go. It's because I like it when uh, players sign with teams they actually played for. It just kind of makes this series a lot more fun. Minnesota. Just some more prospects. They have two uh, prospects with the last name Sushi. And they both have M. What the heck? And they're both low top nines. Michael Sushi. Drafted 5th round 2027. Michael Sushi. Drafted 5th round 2028. What the heck? Yeah, that is really weird. I don't think I've ever seen something like that. Both these guys play the same position. The overalls are a little bit different, but one had a couple extra years of development. Both are low top nines with the same potential. Both were drafted in the fifth round, a year apart, almost in the exact same spot. One's a playmaker, one's a power forward. Damn, it's, it feels like I'm seeing double. <laughs> so Montreal's got some defensemen on the block like Andre Markov. Nashville. There's some picks. New Jersey's got probably picks. Same with the Islanders. Ottawa's got some prospects. Philly's got prospects and actually some older veterans. Yeah, I'm not seeing really anything to trade for in the next episode, but that's okay because free agency, we could sign players if we want to, but if not, we could just keep our team building up the way it is because it's been pretty good for us for the last few years because... We've drafted some good players. We picked up some scraps from other teams in free agency. And our team has been developing pretty well, I would say. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to free agency. We might sign some players if you guys think they're necessary. If not, we'll anyways start up the season simulation and see if we can maybe make it to a cup final next year. So let me know what you guys think down below. And I'll see you guys next time.